Hello everyone, so today we are going to be looking back at my first year on YouTube. For those of you who've been following me for a while, you'll know that on Monday I celebrated my one year anniversary on the 28th. Kind of amazing. So I kind of wanted to take a look back over the last year. We're gonna look at some of my worst videos, some of my best videos, some of my stats, talking about monetization, channel growth, as much as I can give you guys, literally only have 12 months worth of experience though, so if you're looking to start a YouTube, maybe look somewhere else. I'm not a guru at this, I just talk about handbags for fun, so it's not like I'm you know, breaking the algorithm here. Anyway guys, let's take a look back at my first year on YouTube. and welcome if you're new to my channel my name is Caleb and on here you're gonna find a lot of things like luxury shopping reveals reviews unboxings luxury travel daily vlogs pretty much anything that has to do with life and style you're gonna find right here on this channel so before we go any further make sure to hit the subscribe button down below give this video a thumbs up and say hi to me down in the comments always have a fun interaction down there safe space and if this isn't enough for you which I'm guessing it's not find me over on Instagram caleb.snell.designer and yeah my first year on YouTube. So looking back when I first started my YouTube channel, where was I? It was right in the middle of the you know what, we were locked down, couldn't really do much. I was a little bored and I was doing a lot of online shopping. Starting a YouTube channel is something I'd always wanted to do ever since I could remember, like literally since YouTube's been a thing. I, I don't know, it was like a perfect storm. I was bored, Zane had extra time to edit because we couldn't go out and do things. I was shopping a lot online and for me, this is gonna sound completely psychotic, but I'm, I'm a person that watches the background in videos. I mean, granted, this apartment's not terribly glamorous, but our last one was gorgeous. And I was like, you know what? I finally have the perfect space to kind of showcase, you know, a lifestyle channel. Here it is. And then we moved. What can you do? Anyway, so looking back at this year, what what have I learned? What have I gone through? Let's talk about some of the videos because there are some very cringy videos and I have some insider information on some of them for you. So let's dive in. Okay, you guys, so when it comes to my very first episode, the trailer, A, my hair is really long because we were locked down, so it's not like I can go and get a haircut. I have squeezed myself into some Gucci, you're welcome. And literally as it's playing through the snippets, I wanted to kind of make it look like these were upcoming episodes that you might be able to see. However, they weren't. I never produced them. I am literally just mouthing like, this is a Gucci jacket and it's blue. I'm, I'm just like saying like the absolute bare minimum. The gondolas, at the beginning, those are just straight up from our trip to Italy, and I just happened to film them correctly on my camera. I'm like, okay, well, I want to have some travel on this channel. Couldn't really travel at the time, so it's not like I could film anything. Here's some old footage of Italy, and yeah, basically a fake video. So I kind of punked you guys, I'm sorry. Thank you for sticking around for those OG subscribers. Looking back, incredibly cringy. I don't know why I popped my collar out like that. Love the jacket though. Would I wear those jeans with that look again? Probably not. I miss that apartment though, it was beautiful. And can we talk about the title cards? Horrendous, absolutely terrible. I was trying to go for an aesthetic and missed the mark on that one. So I'm sorry, you guys. All right, so looking back, let's talk about another video. Which one is it? Oh my gosh, the designer bag collection video. <sighs> The original designer bag collection video is one of the biggest disappointments on my channel. It's taken it over a year, well, nearly a year, to get to 512 views. Ouch. <laughs> I was having a terrible hair day, and at one point when I started the video, I did the video, watched it back, horrendous hair, just like bushy, gross, rat's nest. Again, couldn't go and get it cut. So I, I decided to like wet it down and push it back to try and do this like slick look. That was a huge fail. You can literally, as you're watching the video progress, by the time you get to the end, my hair is dry and it's like, it's disgusting. It's a horrible video. Quite frankly, it's boring. I hadn't really found my personality here in front of the camera yet. It's so hard to get through and it's so embarrassing that that was one of my first videos. But anyway, what can you do? <laughs> All right, so skipping through. Oh, uh, okay. My Louis Vuitton haul Fornicetti reveal. That was a bad day. I was having a bad day. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. So I was in the car. I'm all ready to drive downtown Chicago, go to Oak Street, pop into YSL. There was a couple things I wanted to buy. My essay was not texting me back. Still haven't heard from him. It's been nearly a year, but that's fine. It's okay. I was just disappointed. It was starting to rain. It was gross. I didn't feel like driving all the way into the city just to walk around in the rain. So I literally drove to our Neiman Marcus down the street. They didn't have the YSL bag I wanted. I ended up in the LV line. As these things happen, you all know. And I bought a bag that I particularly, not saying I didn't want it, but this was the one instance, the only instance on this channel where I bought something just to buy something. And 
I kind of regret it, I'm not gonna lie. So it's the same amount as the YSL item I was gonna purchase. I mean, it was gonna be the YSL, the, the monogram clutch, the, and the caviar, not the caviar, they call it grain de poudre. The grain de poudre leather, and I wanted black with gold hardware. Simple. I mean, it should be easy to get right, but my out, my Neiman Marcus didn't have it. Same price. I bought the LV Daily pouch thinking I would fall in love with it, and it didn't happen. Now, mind you, I didn't just like go out and willy-nilly charge something just to have something to buy. Like, I legitimately had the money for something else. I just ended up buying the Daily pouch instead. I've used it a few times, but it's not like my go-to. It's not my ride or die. Like, if I'm wearing something, you know, fun, pink, and flirty, I guess, I'll grab it. But if I could do a do-over, I don't think I would buy it just to buy it. You know what I mean? I mean, yes. Balenciaga. Let's discuss Balenciaga videos. As you all know, I absolutely love Balenciaga, but when I first started my channel, my Balenciaga videos were like the worst. They'd be number 10 in my queue, you know, like for creators, you have like each week, like when you post a new video, it'll show you like how it's ranking compared to the last 10 videos. Balenciaga videos would always be at the bottom. No one watched them. No one really cared for the reviews at first. I think with YouTube, if, if you're going to make a YouTube channel, pick kind of a niche subject. Don't like be like willy nilly, like this week we're going to do a challenge. This week we're going to talk about a handbag. This week we're going to make slime. Find your niche. Find what you're passionate about. And for me, that's handbags, luxury goods, Balenciaga, fashion, like that kind of realm and travel. Just because why not? You're paying a lot of money to travel. You might as well document it. Duh. But Balenciaga Balenciaga videos were terrible and I'm a firm believer in build it and they will come. Like you kind of have to like build your audience, I guess. Now my Balenciaga videos are like some of my top performers, like my recent ones, the city bag reviews, the city bag unboxings, the work unboxing, the Balenciaga guide. That's one of my most watched channel videos here on my channel. So you kind of have to build, create the content and then the right people will find it, if you know what I mean, right? Right? So anyway, as you all know, I love Balenciaga. There's probably an unboxing and a review of Balenciaga every month on this channel. Kind of a problem. It's not a problem. It's a passion. We'll call it a passion because we're not negative around here. But yeah, Balenciaga. So when it comes to my most viewed videos and my least viewed videos, let's start with the least viewed. Let's get let's get the let's get the sad part out of the way. Oh my god. So my top three least viewed videos are drum roll. I feel like someone needs to hand me an envelope so I can like do it Academy Award style. Anyway, next time. My three least viewed videos are in descending order. We're gonna start with the best least viewed one and work our way down. So at 129 views is my Hermes Rio review. Part of that was the original thumbnail was horrendous, I will admit. I will take full responsibility for that. And it is a random bag that Hermes discontinued like 20 years ago. So who's searching for a review? Clearly only 129 people did. The next least viewed video on this channel at 122 views. This is embarrassing. <laughs> is my hiking weekend vlog. Again, this was one of the first videos I published. It was within two months of starting my channel. So it was probably too soon to spring a vlog on you guys. Completely take full responsibility for that. We actually met up with our friends down in Indianapolis. We did some wine tasting. We went hiking. Just a really fun afternoon. Just didn't do well on my channel, but that's okay. And again, the least viewed video on my channel comes in at and this is so embarrassing, it's at 100 views. My spring weekend vlog. I don't know why I thought vlogs would take off in the beginning, they didn't. So this video, I've only seen, I haven't seen it since it went up. So this is basically Zane and I, I think we're getting our hair cut and then we go and get coffee downtown. We swing in the park and then we just drive home. Is it an exciting vlog? Probably not. There is some eye candy in that one, actually. We stopped at the Von Mar back in Fort Wayne when we lived there, and they had this counter of pre-owned like LV and Gucci that was like horrendously three times overpriced because that stuff was insane. Like literally a bag that they were carrying for like 1600 you could find on Fashion File for like 500 but that's beside the point. We did look at a few kind of fun, rare, older LV bags. And then I sat in a Target parking lot. Really exciting vlog. For those of you who missed it, maybe you wanna go back and watch it again. Probably not, please don't, it's embarrassing. And those are my three least viewed videos. Now, when it comes to my most viewed, I've got a few good ones, not gonna lie. And number three is my Coach Mini Cash and Tote review. That video blew up. I think it quickly became number one in its category. Like if you search the Mini Cash and review, I think it's the most viewed or one of the top ones. That one comes in at 2,880 as of today. The second most viewed, and I'm really curious why, because there's a lot of really good, you know what, I'm not gonna question it. If you wanna go watch it, watch it, please, please do. But I mean, there's tons of other videos on the same subject. My YSL Uptown Pouch review comes in at 2,930 views. It's a 13 minute video. 
talking about a bag that can barely hold a phone and a card holder, but watch it if you want. <laughs> now, my most viewed video, and I can see why, because it was an amazing video, is my Louis Vuitton unboxing 2022 luxury shopping haul. So in this video, I took you guys to the Oak Brook Mall. We looked at Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Neiman Marcus. I picked up quite a few things at Louis Vuitton. That one has 3,227 views as of today. So that's pretty cool. That's really, really cool. So see, that's a vlog, technically. I mean, yes, there's an LV unboxing element to it. So maybe I just need to do that with my other vlogs, just always unbox something from LV. The gears are turning. So anyway, and it's all about exponents on YouTube. So when you first start out, you are getting no subscribers, basically each day, like maybe three a week. And then just like views and watch hours, that that graph will just rocket. It's it's so cool to watch and like to go back and compare. So when I started my YouTube channel, it took me literally forever to get past 300. It was so slow, in fact, I started my channel March 28th, 2021. And by the time my birthday came up in October 30th, 2021, my goal was literally to hit 330 subscribers for my 33rd birthday. So that's what? March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. That's seven months to get to 330 subscribers. That's, that's a long time and might've been a slow growth quite honestly, compared to some of the other YouTubers that I started out with. But I've caught up, which is a good thing. I'm very grateful. It kind of turned around at the start of this year with my video where I discussed my 2022 luxury wish list. So that video, just for kicks, let me see here. Here are the numbers on that video. It was viewed 1.9 thousand times. It has 202.9 watch hours. That's like, what, three weeks a month? I don't know. It's gotten me 68 subscribers and I made 63 cents on it, but we'll talk about monetization here in a minute. But that video, you guys, was literally what turned my channel around. I was 591 when that video went up. I hit 1,000 about a month and a half ago in February. I, I ended up hitting 1,000 subscribers. So it really, really took off, which is amazing. I'm currently at one point, I think I'm at 1,333. It's a nice round number. As of today. I'm All sure. right, so some things to know about monetization. It is not going to happen overnight. And once it does happen, don't quit your day job because it's going to be a minute before you can actually make a profit and pay yourself back. Once you factor in the laptop, the MacBook Pro, the lights, I have three studio lights around me, the microphones, the tripods, the gimbal, a lot of money, not to mention if you're a luxury YouTube channel, all the shopping you have to do. I wanna create an LLC and make that a tax write-off. Is that a thing? Let me know down in the comments if anyone knows tax law. Anyway, it takes time to pay yourself back. A lot of time. You're gonna be in the hole a few thousand dollars when you start your YouTube channel if, if you wanna have like the lights, the, the this, the that, and the other, which I highly recommend. It takes a minute to pay yourself back. For full transparency, because you know we love transparency around here, let me just put my financials out there on the table for you. So year to date, which is like, I think I got monetized on February 12th. So yeah, I hit about a thousand in mid-February. I know I hit 4,000 watch hours well before that though, which was kind of amazing. So since February 12th, up until today, which is March 27th, I've made $93.25. Mm. <laughs> Seriously though, not to knock it, that is amazing. Who knew that something that's like so fun and enjoyable could also make you money? I mean, that's kind of a concept, right? So the way the monetization works for the viewers, in order for the content creator to get paid, you have to watch the ads all the way through, you can't skip. Kind of a bummer, because I have literally seen ads pop up for like 45 minutes long, and I'm not kidding which is absolutely insane. But for my fellow content creators that I know are monetized, I watch the ads all the way through just because it's the nice thing to do. I mean, we, as content creators, we work incredibly hard. I know for a fact without Zane doing my editing, I couldn't do this and do two videos a week because I'm a very lazy person. And when I have downtime, I want my downtime. So I, it would take a lot for me to get the laptop out and edit a video and do what he does and make it look as professional as he does and also shoot the darn thing, do the shopping, do the research. A lot, a lot, a lot of work goes into creating content. When I see, you know, like the thumbs up and the positive comments, like that means the world to me because I'm doing it for me because I enjoy it, but I also want to do it for you guys because if, if I'm making things and putting them out there that no one wants to watch, then what was the point? You know what I mean? Am I trying to become a trillionaire and like have like, you know, 3 million subscribers? I mean, absolutely, but <laughs> I know it's going to take time. I just, for those who have been subscribed to me, especially those from the beginning that continue to watch, comment, thumbs up. I just want to give you guys a huge shout out and say thank you so much. I do this because of you guys, quite honestly. I, it's just, it's it's fun for me to make content that I know you're going to enjoy. And I love, you know, Zane's little quirks that he puts into the videos, like the pop-up comment. I think those crack me up. If you guys watched my handbag collection video, uh, came out Sunday, that little graphic took him so long to make and 
time. I'm kind of terrible because the night before it was supposed to go out, I said, well, what if we put a background color to it just to make it easier to read? Just because I knew there'd be comments like, Caleb, we can't read this. And I wanted to make sure that you guys were able to read, you know, even though I'm saying the name of the bag, I wanted to make sure you were able to read it as well. I don't know where I'm going with that, but a lot of work goes into a YouTube channel. So before you start, make sure you have the time and also engage with your audience. This is going to be something for my fellow content creators. No matter how big of an audience you have, whether you have 200 subscribers or less, or, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 subscribers, reply to comments. Give it a heart. Reply. It's interaction. It's letting your community kind of know more about you, more engaged. Because I know if, if I comment on a bigger YouTuber's video and they reply back, like, that is amazing. Cloud9. I'm like, wow, they saw my comment and then they took the time to respond. I think that's so cool. For content creators, it's it's kind of a job and it doesn't just stop once you hit the publish button. You have to you have to follow through and see it to the the, the end line. Is that a football reference? I don't, I don't know sports. You get what I mean. Take it home, make a goal, sports stuff. I'm so bad at this. Sh shoot a hoop, I don't fuck, I, I don't know. You know what I mean though, you guys. So re reply to comments. It's not that hard. It takes like two seconds. And it's fun because you get to know your community better. Like I've met uh, so many awesome people, like fellow content creators here on YouTube, on Instagram, down in my comments, like really cool people who have like so awesome input to say, you know, they're sharing with you like what kind of bags they're looking for, what they just added to their collection. They want your opinion on things. So I just, I think it's fun to interact. And I, I just love that aspect of, of, of being on YouTube. It's, it's, it's so cool. I'm, I'm geeking out about it. Anyway, so moving forward, I want to hear some feedback from you guys. I'm always asking for feedback. I love it. Let me know down in the comments, like what was your favorite video of mine and like what made you want to subscribe and kind of join our little community here. I'm just interested to know and like what kind of content do you guys want to see from me moving forward? Are you happy with the unboxings and the reviews? Do you want more like shopping vlogs, which I'm not going to lie, those 100% freak me out. I'm terrified to do it, but I'll try for you guys. I'll do anything for you guys. Do you want more travel vlogs? I mean, heck, I'd like more travel vlogs. You know, stamp my passport. I'm ready to get out of here. I need a vacation. Let me know down in the comments. Let's talk. Let's discuss. Yeah, let's go from there. Anyway, you guys, I can't say it enough. Thank you all so much for investing your time and choosing to watch my channel. That's amazing. Thank you. I just, I, I love it here. I've, I've met some really great people, fellow content creators, people down in the comments, viewers, and I absolutely love hearing from all of you, even on Instagram, like shoot me a DM, like is there a bag you're looking for or did you find the perfect bag? Let me know. I love talking about this stuff. I could talk about it all day. In fact, I do. Poor Zane. Again, thank you so much for a great first year. I will see you in the next video. So until then, stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.